Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we look at the method of integration by substitution in which we look at the variables currently used in the expression and substitute them for new variables to try to make our integrals somewhat easier. And there are many forms in which substitution can take. Let's start with the simplest one. So this could be an inverse version of a small um, simple form of the chain rule. So for example, what would d of sine of x by dx be? We know that this is equal to cos x. But what if we had d of sine of 3x by dx? In that case, what do you do? You use the chain rule. You say d of sine of 3x by d of 3x and you multiply it by d of 3x by d of x. d sine 3x by d 3x gives you cos of 3x and d 3x by dx gives you 3. So the derivative of sine of 3x is 3 cos of 3x. We have to multiply it by an extra 3 because of this chain rule. Right. So this is uh, so similarly we'd like to see what happens when we integrate. So we saw the derivative of sine 3x it was 3 cos 3x. Right. So what we can write it as is integral of 3 cos of 3x dx is equal to sine of 3x plus c. Right. Which basically gives us cos of 3x is equal to sine of 3x by 3 plus c. Now what we would like to do is try to calculate this integral directly instead of doing it by the derivative first. So our goal if is if we know the integral of cos x dx, we know the integral of cos x dx is equal to sine x plus c. We want to calculate the integral of cos of 3x dx. Right. So how do we do that? Well, the simple thing is we substitute 3x to be another variable. Let's say it's y. Right. And from this what we get is we can differentiate this. Here we can just put cos of y but we need to take care of this dx as well because what we are left with is integral of cos y into dx. Right. Now we need to change this dx into dy as well. So from this we can see dy by dx is equal to 3. So once you make the substitution, you differentiate this equation to get the relation between their differential changes as well. Right. So which gives me dx is equal to dy by 3. Right. So now dx I can substitute as dy by 3. And now I get an expression which I already know. 1 by 3 will come outside. We know what the integral of cos y dy is. This is 1 by 3 integral of cos y dy, which is 1 by 3 sin y plus c. And you can't leave this as the final answer because the answer has to be in terms of x. So y is 3x. So this is 1 by 3 sin 3x plus c. I'll repeat it once more starting from the reverse direction. Let's say you have 1 by 3 sin 3x. You differentiate it. So 1 by 3 will be outside. The derivative of sin 3x will be cos 3x multiplied by 3 because of the chain rule. That 3 will cancel with this 3 and which will give me the derivative of this expression to be cos 3x. So this expression is the integral of cos 3x with respect to x. How do we calculate that? Either we know the derivatives and we can go from there or we just simply make the substitution 3x is equal to y. How do I know to make that substitution? We need the integral of cos 3x dx. We know the integral of cos of x dx. Right? We know the integral of cos of something with respect to that thing. So we just name whatever is inside here to y and figure out a way to convert this dx into some form of dy. 
in this case it's just a constant into dy in some cases it will be a little bit more complicated but that's the motivation for substitution you see integral cos 3x dx you immediately say well i know the integral of cos x i know the integral of cos of something basically so that something needs to be its own variable 3x becomes y now dx needs to be replaced by dy which you can get from this derivative equation dy by dx is 3 because y is 3x which means dx is dy by 3 now you are left with cos y dy by 3 and this is what you get ultimately i show you one more example of this to make it clear let's say we want to calculate the integral of uh, sec square of 10x dx Right. We know the integral of sec square x dx is equal to tan x plus c. Right. So what do we do? We know the integral of sec square x with respect to dx. We'll, so we'll just substitute 10 x is equal to another variable. Let's say it's z in this case. From this what I get is dz by dx is equal to 10 which gives me dx is equal to dz by 10. Now we just substitute this here, sec square of 10x will become integral of sec square of z and dx will become dz by 10 and 1 by 10 will come outside, the integral of sec square z dz will be tan of z plus c, so we get 1 by 10 tan of z plus c, now z has to be replaced back by 10x, so 1 by 10 tan of 10x plus c. And you can always differentiate this to check your answer. If you differentiate this, you will get sec square of 10x into 10, which and 10 will cancel with 1 by 10. So you will be left with sec square of 10x dx. So this is equal to 1 by 10 tan of 10x plus c. Also, if you are a little bit more careful uh, in studying this, you will notice inverses with differentiation all the time. If we had um, tan of 10x, that is for the derivative of that we multiplied by 10 for sec square 10x we divided it by 10 right and some uh, some books and some people like to remember it in this form but i just think if you're well versed with the theory then substitution is not going to take you more than a few seconds so it's not really worth trying to remember those formulas so this is one way in which substitution can be used let's look at another form and now we'll actually see the importance of that variable with respect to what we have differentiated so our goal will be to calculate an integral of the form uh, 2x cos of x squared dx. We need the integral of 2x cos x squared. Right. So let's start with what we know. We know d of sin x by dx is cos x. Right. Now what we'll do is we'll just substitute uh, actually since we are using x here let me just change the variable here you can always change the variable it doesn't create any problems if d of sin x by dx is cos x obviously d of sin y by dy will be cos y now if we substitute in this equation y is equal to x squared what do we get d of sin of x squared by something is equal to cos of x squared but this thing is something which a lot of people forget now this is not by dx now this is by d of x squared right if this was dx then the equation would be wrong the derivative of sine of x squared is not cos of x squared if you're differentiating with respect to x it is cos of x squared if you differentiate it with respect to x squared right so what that gives me is sine of x squared is equal to integral of cos of x squared d of x squared and this is the first time we've seen something other than x here normally when we differentiate a function it's with respect to x or y or that variable we rarely differentiate with respect to x squared but if we put y is equal to x squared then the denominator here also is dx squared we take it here this is the valid expression we get sine of x squared is equal to integral of cos of x squared d of x squared right now what we can do is, we know that d of x squared by dx is equal to 2x or d of x squared is equal to 2x dx. From this what we get is sine of x squared 
is equal to integral of now d of x squared is 2x dx so 2x cos of x squared dx which is what we were trying to find out right. obviously there's going to be a plus c here I haven't written it now from now I'm just going to omit the plus c's because I hope you understand that they're always there and I won't waste my time writing it so basically the integral of 2x cos of x square is sine of x square how did we get that now we can always do this by going back to the differentiation but we need to figure out a way to do it on our own right so let's go back what we had was the integral of 2x cos of x squared dx right and we needed the integral and uh, what we are going to do and now I'm going to do this for a completely general case let's say you have integral of f of x dx which you know right let's say this is something you know and you substitute x is equal to let's say another function g of t right then then from this what you get is dx by dt is equal to the function g dash of t whatever that function is which means dx is equal to g dash of t dt right now we substitute it back here what do we get integral of f of x dx x is g of t so integral of f of g of t and dx which is g dash t dt right so now this is what you need to connect with this this is the whole theory here anytime you see a function of this form f of g of t multiplied by g dash t dt this is the substitution you make right so basically you have to have an expression of a particular function and multiplied by the derivative of that function so in this case x square is that function right you have x square a function of x squared right cos of x squared it could also be e to the power x squared log of x squared we have a function of x squared and that is multiplied by 2x and dx right so basically that's how we know to put this substitution I'll just put in the substitution uh, to show you one more time how it's done and then we'll look at it in a little bit more detail we just put x is equal to g of t now here the variables are somewhat um, mismatch I'll just use t here again just for the sake of it right so this is what we need to calculate 2t cos of t squared dt now we need to put x is equal to g of t which is t squared so we'll put t squared is equal to new, new variable x and we'll see a very lovely result 2t is equal to dx by dt which gives me dx is equal to 2t dt this 2t and this dt combine to give me dx so what I get is integral of cos of x dx which I know is sine of x plus c and now x is equal to t square we have to put it back so this is sine of t squared plus c and you can just check by differentiation the derivative of sine of t squared will be cos of t squared multiplied by 2t right so this is basically chain rule if you have to differentiate f of g of t you'll differentiate f and then you'll have to multiply it by the derivative of g of t as well right with respect to t and this is where it comes from so this is the one thing you have to remember it will make many of your problems quite easy anytime you see an expression of g of t multiplied by g dash t this is what you put I'll just give you a few more examples of that we saw right now integral of cos of t square into 2t dt but it didn't have to be cos of t square it could have been e to the power t square into 2t dt this is again this is the function of t squared this is the derivative of t squared right it could have been uh, cos of t squared plus e to the power t squared into 2t dt it doesn't matter right basically any time you see a function of an expression and the derivative of that expression I'll give you a few other examples uh, if you have the integral of uh, 3x squared cos of x cube dx 
this is x cube the derivative of that is 3x squared right in this case you just put x cube is equal to some new variable simple uh, if you get the integral of ln of 3x squared plus 9x and multiplied by uh, 6x plus 9 dx. Now see, this is where integration becomes interesting. If you have this, integral of ln of 3x squared plus 9x into 6x plus 9 dx. I just actually solve it because this is interesting. What you do is, 3x squared plus 9x has the derivative 6x plus 9. So you just put 3x squared plus 9x as a new variable y. And what you get is, dy by dx, I'll just take dx to that side, is equal to 6x plus 9 dx which makes the integral sorry which makes the integral a very nice value and this expression will become simpler if you make the correct substitution so we have ln of this that is ln of y and then you have dy right we haven't discussed the derivative of ln x yet we'll do that after another method of integration but basically once you know the derivative of ln x this is where you get Right, and that is because this expression had the derivative which was this expression. So, anytime you have a function of g of x, I'll just write x instead of t now. A function of g of x, do you know what a function inside a function is? We've studied that extensively in differentiation and multiplied by the derivative of that function g dash x dx. In that case, all you do is substitute g of x is equal to some new variable y you'll get g dash of x dx is equal to dy and you put it here what you'll get is integral of f of y dy which is obviously simpler in most cases than f of g of x g dash x dx let's take one more example we'll, we'll get again a similar type of expression but in, but in a different form let's say we have to calculate the integral of sine cube x cos squared x dx right now I'm going to do the things which will get us in uh, the familiar form where we make the substitution and the natural question that will arise in your mind is how do we know which way to go there are an infinite number of ways to go well that can only come through practice the moment I see an expression like this I know in which direction I want to go so that I can get this into the form of f of g of t g dash t dt but that will only come with practice Right. In this case, what I know is the derivative of sin x is cos x and the derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Right. So, apart from the minus sign, they are derivatives of each other. Which means, if I have any expression of cos x multiplied by sin x dx, then I'll be able to solve it. Like, I'll be able to simplify it at least. Or, if I have any expression of sin x multiplied by cos x dx then also I'll be able to make the substitution in this case I don't have that because you have sin cube x and cos square x can we write this in any form similar to this well we can what we can write this is integral of sin x multiplied by sin square x cos square x dx Right, and now sine square x we can write as 1 minus cos square x and this whole thing is now an expression of cos x. It is a polynomial expression of cos x and it will be multiplied by 1 sine x outside which will help us in making the substitution. So what we'll do is this will become integral of uh, 1 minus cos square x multiplied by cos square x multiplied by sine x dx and now I'll just put sin x is equal to t. Cos x is equal to t. This is an expression of cos x. So we'll put cos x is equal to t. Which gives me dt by dx is equal to minus sin x. Which gives me dx into sin x is equal to minus dt. And we substitute here what we get is integral of 1 minus t square into t square into minus 1 into dt now this is just a polynomial we take the minus outside this is basically t square minus t to the power 4 into dt we know what that is minus of t square has the integral t cube by 3 t 
to the power 4 has the integral t to the power 5 by 5 and plus c and now we'll substitute t back as cos x so what we get is uh, I'll just take the minus sign here cos to the power 5x by 5 minus cos qx by 3 plus c and if you differentiate this expression the derivative of c is 0 you should ultimately get this expression now we can always write sin x if we just had sin square x and cos square x we would have to figure out some other way. We could take 1 sin x out and this would be sin x and write sin x as root of 1 minus cos square x and it would come in this form but there would be a root and the problem is we are trying to simplify the integrals. That would make it even more complicated. Right. So initially when you are learning integration it will be pretty much hit and trial. Ultimately uh, what will happen is you will be able to see whether or not something will work without actually having to go through the whole process and that will save you time and you will be able to know in which direction to go. We will take one final example which I will solve by two separate methods uh, to show you another variation of something that can be used. It will be simpler than this. We will just do integral of sin cube x dx. Right. So we can write it in that form easily. This is integral of 1 minus cos square x into sin x dx. Right, sin x into sin square x which is 1 minus cos square x. This is an expression of cos x multiplied by its derivative with a minus sign which is really trivial. So we'll just substitute cos x is equal to t which gives me uh, dt by dx is equal to minus sin x which gives me sin x dx is equal to minus dt and the integral is 1 minus t squared into minus into dt. So the integral of t squared minus 1 will be t cubed by 3 minus t plus c. So this is cos cube x by 3 minus cos x plus c. But there's another way we can solve this and uh, this is basically you can use trigonometric identities and for many of the integrals involving trigonometric functions it will be quite easy to use trigonometric identities. So in this case there's one formula which we know which is sine of 3x. We know that is equal to 3 sin x minus 4 sin cube x which gives me sin cube x is equal to 3 sin x minus sin 3x by 4. So I can just substitute that. Integral of 3 sin x minus sin 3x by 4 dx. And we don't know the integral of sin x to the power of something because that is complicated. But the sine of a constant into x, we know the integrals, right? This is easily done by chain rule. So the first will be 3 by 4 sin x. The integral of that will be uh, minus 3 by 4 cos x. And this is minus sin 3x by 4. So we'll have plus cos 3x by 4. And we'll have to divide by 3 also. So by 12 plus c. And you can substitute the value formula for cos 3x which is similar to this. And you'll be able to verify that these two are the same. Right. So you can often use trigonometric identities which you already know to simplify things. For example, if you have something like integral of sin 3x, sin 7x, dx. Well, you know the formula for 2 sin c sin d. Right. You can convert the product of two signs into the sum of two signs. And those signs will have some coefficients here, uh, which will not be 3 or 7 something else. But you already know how to calculate the integral of sine of kx. So that's going to be quite simple. Right. So always remember your previous trigonometric identities which you know, because often you can use them to get the integral into a form from which you can proceed further. The second way to calculate integrals, the second method would be by partial fractions and we'll do that in the next video. Thank you.